Hi, and welcome back to The Scripture Life. My name is Lanita Downs, and you tuned into the spoken word, the scripture spoken, sorry. And this series is the revelation of Jesus Christ. We'll be reading through the book of Revelation uh, each day. Uh, you'll hear from someone else uh, reading through the book of Revelation. We pray that something you will hear throughout our series will encourage you to have a deeper relationship and a walk with the Lord. Um, and we're going to jump into prayer. Oh, God, we just thank and praise you for this day, God. Father God, we thank you for giving us an opportunity to be before your people and to share your word, God, your word of truth with your people, God. I pray, God, that you give us understanding, God, for we know that we're living in the last and evil days, God, that your word will give us deeper understanding, God, that your word will give us faith, boldness, and the foundation that we need to stand on to trust you and to believe you despite the circumstances and despite the things that may be going on in the day and the hour that we're living in. I'm going to, my name is Lenita Downs and I'm going to be reading from chapter two of Revelation. So again, we always ask you to get your uh, handwritten word, uh, printed Bible, sorry. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be reading from chapter two of the book of Revelation. Starting in verse one. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden sticks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and how and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because Thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, when thou art fallen to repent and do your first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick from out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast that thou hast hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And to the angel of the church in Samarna, write these things, saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, excuse me, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil has cast some of you into prison, that ye be may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. He that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, write these things, saith he, which hath the sharp sword of the two edges. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is and thou holdest fast my name and has not denied my faith even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth but I have a few things against thee because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them to hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that have an ear, let him hear 
what the spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. And unto the angel of the church in <laughs> Thyatira, 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 right? These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and that last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into the tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and the hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already beheld, with that, I'm sorry, but that which ye have already held fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give the power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter. Shall they be broken as shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying unto the church and we are the church. Amen. So we're talking about several different type of churches. Wait a minute. I think we only talking about four. Yes, I'm sorry. In chapter two, we're only talking about four different churches, but in the book of Revelation, it talks about seven churches, but we're covering uh, information about set uh, four different churches. And God was telling them, you know, he gave them praises for the things that they do. He said, but I have somewhat of a problem, but I know thy works and thy labor. I'm telling, he's telling them, I know what you do. How be it ever? I have a problem. All right. So the first one is um, the book of Ephesus. I mean, the church of Ephesus. And so um, in the book of Ephesus, he says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you because thou hast left thy first love. It says, remember, therefore, when thou art fallen and repent. And so here it's saying that they knew Christ. They knew God, but they left the first love. And what is our first love? For Christ first loved us that we are able to love him. Amen. So the church of Ephesus, their deeds, their hard work, their perseverance, they rejected false apostles. They hated the deeds of the Nicolaitans, but they left their first love. And so God here was telling them that they needed to remember who they are, who he is. They need to repent and do their first works over. Um, and so uh, God's warning to them was that if they did not repent and do their first works over, that he was going to remove their lapstand. And so in that, you know, and when, when we're in church, 
uh, when we're living a life unto Christ, we have to be mindful and remember that if we are to fall away, to do that first works over. And one of the things in growing up in a church and, you know, you'll hear a lot of people talk about legalism and bondage in the church. However, there has to be some type of order or structure to the things that are of the Lord. And it's one thing to clean the church, but it's one thing to be in leadership in the church. Scripture tells us to serve with clean hands and a pure heart. And so here in Revelations, if we find ourselves falling away from our first love, Scripture tells us to repent and do our first works over. And first works over is learning to love Christ again, getting familiar with those things that are Christ. And so sometimes if we are in leadership and in a place where we're supposed to know better and fall, find ourselves falling because we are, we can, I don't want to say we are human, but we can uh, sometimes question ourselves, doubt ourselves, and or due to certain atmosphere um, in the council of the multitude of voices begin to make a wrong choice. It can even be something that we have already had within our own bodies to cause us to lust after. Because remember, when um, lust, um, we're drawn away with our own lust and enticed. And so if we haven't dealt with some things within ourselves coming into Christ, then it's up to us to begin to purify ourselves, begin to check those things that are not scripture based, those things that are not lining up with the word of God and begin to work out those things over again within ourselves. Sometimes we have to do a re-evaluation of our heart, of our mind, uh, and where we are in Christ spiritually. Um, and doing our first works over. You know, if you're in the church and you've fallen, you can very well have a repentant heart, but sometimes we need to sit down and be retaught. And because we need to be brought into remembrance of what the scripture says. In addition to that, we need to lead by example. If, um, you know, we put measures on sin, like uh, some sin is worse than others, but all sin is the same. A liar is the same as a thief and a murderer, adulterer, a fornicator. And so uh, we have to be mindful of our mindset when it comes to the things of Christ. We have to reverence the things of Christ, even if we're given position and, and not even if we have a position, but because we profess Christ, we should want to live as if Christ lives in us. We should want to be an example in, in all reverence unto him. That way when people see us, they don't have to question, are we Christ, you know, of Christ or professing to be of Christ. They will know by our works as in, because this is in red writing. So this is Jesus talking. And so he said he knew their works. And I, my question to you today is, are people, do people know your works, your labor? Is it unto Christ? You know, are you in patience, but left the very first thing, which is Christ, where we've gotten so caught up in doing things and, and working in the church, but we have no love for Christ, our life, because we could be so caught up into working and um, laboring for the church to where we've really forgotten the gospel to share, you know, the love, you know, because scripture tells us if we have not love, it profit us nothing. Because you can have people working in the church and don't have love for one another. And so we have to be mindful as believers and professors of Christ that when we're working in the ministry, that when we're working for Christ and all the work that we're doing and having patience, that we don't forget the love of Christ, our first love of Christ and living a life unto him. Because again, we can get caught up and drawn away with our own lust. But scripture gives us a way out and that's to repent. If you're falling away, repent. You have people that are in the church because of pride. You know, we have to continue to walk in the spirit of humility. And through humility, God is able to work with us. He's able to minister to us. 
as well as he's able to use others. The Holy Ghost would even check us when we're in error, when we are falling or before we even fall. I believe warning comes before destruction and the Lord is gracious enough to us to warn us, to show us, to send people. But we have to hearken to the voice. We have to submit. We have to humble ourselves and realize where we are and where we stand spiritually. And um, you see it a lot today where, you know, we think because people are in the ministry that they're, you know, whatever level and no man is greater than another. I remember my former pastor would say, there's no big eyes and little U's. Now we're all God's children. We may have different gifts and um, be given different opportunities in the church, but we're all his children. We all have a duty to him that's to repent and to serve with a clean hands and pure heart. Amen. So um, even with the um, Ephesus church, you know, they hated some of the things that God hated, you know, the teaching, uh, the evil teaching. Um, But, you know, he's saying, you know, here, you know, they became so hard up in their work where they forgot to listen to the spirit, forgot to move as God was leading. And they were more so caught up in what they were doing and how they wanted to do things and forgot about God or or what Jesus was doing. And so um, in Ephesus, um, I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. So, um, yeah, so Ephesus was also, um, yeah, when he told them to uh, repent, remember, repent, and then do your first works over. When the Lord shows us a problem, he always has a solution. And it's up to us to accept that. That's why I talk about humility, humble yourself. So when we're walking in pride and being puffed up, we can't hear what the spirit is saying, whether the spirit is speaking in our hearts, whether the spirit is speaking through our brothers and sisters in Christ, arm sharpened arm. We as believers have to be apt and open to accountability because if we profess we love God, God will see us through. He will help us. Amen. Um, he told them to, he told them three steps that they needed to take to be in right relationship with him. To hold them to remember their first love, repent, and redo. Remember often slipping away from Christ is the result of forgetting what we once knew. And so again, that's why it's important for us as believers to stay in our word. If, you know, I just think about last year with this shutdown, like, you know, the enemy's job, well, the enemy's plot was to separate believers. And I believe so many believers fell away because there was no strength because there's strength in unity. So he separated them. He tried to close down the churches to bring about a separation to isolate uh, believers. So um, you had churches filled, but not all churches that were filled were solid believers. You had babies and those that were not in fellowship with others begin to, I believe, lose strength because again, the body was separated. The body was broke down. You know how you feel as a person when, if your head is hurting, you know, you may not feel like walking or if your foot is hurting, you may not feel like, um, right. You know, so different parts of the body, uh, function is hard to function when, uh, certain ailments is off. And so same thing as the body of Christ. When one is hurting, you know, it's hard for the will to keep going. Um, when you're weak, it's hard to keep going if you're not in fellowship. Many times we, many times we need, many times what we need is not a new truth or revelation. We need to remember what was truth. Scripture says his word will never pass away. Come on, his word. Heaven and earth may pass away, but his word. And so we think one thing that has stood the test of time is God's word. 
And again, we're constantly encouraging you to read the word because how do you know what truth is? It's through God's word. And in his word is where we gain our strength. Amen. Repentance is a change of mind. It means to face another direction. Do not feel, do not just feel bad about how far you have fallen. Turn around and face the direction that is better. Begin to turn towards those things that are going to help you walk it out. I remember when I first gave my life to the Lord, I knew how to be a sinner. And so how, how can I re um, change my, yes, um, he that is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And so even some things becoming new in my life, I had to remember what I knew was sinful things. So when the church was open, I was there. I was in fellowship. And to, that's where I gained my unity and strength. Yes, I was in my word. But, you know, a good portion of our life, things that we learned is by things that we've seen in our atmosphere. It was easy or conducive for us to do many things because of our atmosphere. And so as, as when I gave my life to the Lord, being in an atmosphere around believers and people who have been walking it out helped me to understand how to fight against my flesh, how to deny the lust of my flesh. In, in addition to what the scripture says, come out from amongst them and be ye separate, said the Lord. Touch not, handle not the unclean thing. Scripture says, then he will receive you. Those were the things that helped me to understand how to crucify my flesh, how to bring my thoughts into captivity and bringing every thought unto the things um, with the knowledge of Christ and coming against everything that is contrary to God's word. Those were the things that helped me walk it out. And so, again, it's telling us to repent. If we were walking a sinful life, when we do our first work over, it's time to change all those things. The way I used to walk, the way I used to talk. And, and how about, you know, even being in a church? So now if you found yourself falling away in the church, you need to change those things that got you even to that. Come on. And so if you were, if you were on the path and somehow the enemy crept in, you need to turn and not go down that path and not open that door. Whatever the door may have been that you open, uh, whatever path um, that you may have been on that you slipped, whatever um, direction you were headed in, you need to turn towards the things of Christ and not approach those things anymore. I remember our pastor was saying, hey, if going to the liquor store to buy a pop would trip you up to want to buy liquor, cigarettes, don't go to the liquor store. If um, going to the park where they may be getting high or smoking marijuana, if it's going to trigger you, don't go. And so even as believers, <clears throat> we assume if we're all in the church and working together, that we all should be on the same level. But you have to have wisdom and discernment to know that everybody's walk is not your walk and everybody's not trying to live it out now. They're not trying to really um, cause you, cause in some people mind, it doesn't take all that. And so if you have a mindset that it takes all that answer, you have to set your atmosphere and, and, and begin to walk in those things that it takes all that answer because I don't want to be falling away. I don't want to be one of those ones that have fallen found that were in the church doing the work and then find myself falling away. Amen. Scripture tell us to have a repentant heart, repentant lifestyle. Repentant is not the thing, but it's about being humble enough to know that you are in error, that you've fallen away, and that you need to turn back to the Lord. Amen. Turn around and face the direction that was better. Change your mind and your attitude, your mindset, and everything that surrounds those things. See, um, sometimes, you know, just thinking about uh, some things falling on good ground, stony ground. We have to, re you know, uh, make sure our heart is in the right place to receive. Amen. So one of the things that Nicolaitans taught, um, it was talking about um, the Ephesus church. They hated the things of um, the Nicolaitans. And so the Nicolaitans taught that believers are to follow 
the lust of their flesh, which is contrary to the word of God. Scripture tells us to deny our flesh. And so the Bible teaches us, um, again, not to follow the lust of our flesh and we will inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, hating what God hates is key to having fellowship with him. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. How can two walk at least they agree? Come on, if we don't believe in Christ and everything that he's about, you know, yes, it's a good thing to say, I want to go to heaven. But are you willing to do what it takes to go to heaven? Are you willing to deny yourself what it takes to go to heaven in church or out of church? Because you have some people that feel like they love the Lord and they're not in church or fellowship. And it's really about the lifestyle. Are you willing to live a life? Are you willing to? He said you have to lay down your cross, lay down your life and pick up his cross and follow him. So everything that you love in your life that's not of Christ, can you give it up? Are you willing to give it up? And then too, in addition to that, we have to remember that um, when the house is clean, when we when we're clean from uh, demonic things, those spirits go out seeking whom it may devour, and it comes back to that house that it came out from, seeing if it's been swept clean. And so, right there, seeing if it's clean, because if you allow something else to come in, it's the the, the devil is a legalist, and he feel he has a right to come back in. And so when he comes back in, scripture said he's not just coming by himself. He's bringing seven more with him. And so as believers, you know, we're living in the last days. We have to be willing to walk this thing out for real, for real. We have to be willing to walk, um, walk holy, walk upright, crucifying the flesh. Cause scripture says there is no good thing that dwelleth in the flesh. The flesh lusteth and longeth to do ungodly, unruly things. Um, all right. So uh, he said the problem was that good works, but without love. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. So the things, um, the four positive things and only one negative thing. And so even though it's one negative thing, he said, repent and do your first works over. And so you as a believer may only be struggling with, you may have all these things right and one negative thing, but he still says, repent and do thy first works over. One thing he's saying, repent because they first lost their first love. If we don't have love, we have nothing. We don't have the love of Christ that we profess. We have nothing. Okay, moving on. And, and again, it says to him that overcometh. No, no, sorry. Okay, we're moving on to Samarna. And so these things saith first and the last, which was dead and alive. I know thy works and thy tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blaspheme of them, which say they are Jews and are not. And are the synagogue of Satan. And so uh, we have to really be mindful uh, of what God is doing. I'm sorry, give me one second. We have to be mindful of uh, what he's doing and what he's saying. And then all that getting, try to get an understanding. So the epistle of Samaria, okay? says he knew thy works and thy tribulation. Sorry, let me go back to my notes. Okay, let's see. Okay. Um, we did that, we did that. Okay. All right. And so we're with the uh, church of Smyrna. But thou art rich, and I know the blaspheme of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are synagogues of Satan. Wow. And so, again, we're talking about a church. And so he's calling it a synagogue of Satan. Okay. Um. 
there were three things that um, were the condition of uh, Smyrna. Um, they were persecuted. Um, they received persecu persecution from the judgment from unbelieving Jews and from Satan. Uh, let's see. And so part of this was um, they were persecuted because Part of the uh, government law was that every person was to confess Caesar was Lord. Mm. And so uh, most Christians during that time refused. So therefore, the government called them Christ called Christians tra traitors, evil rulers um, killed. You know, this was doing um, persecution. So Smyrna was the church that was a persecute the persecuted church. Um So, um, sorry. All right. Yeah. So the church of Smyrna and the church of Smyrna was persecuted for not, uh, bowing. And so, uh, da, 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 da. it says, fear none of these things, which thou shalt suffer. And so, uh, the church of Smyrna was, up against uh, being martyred or, you know, persecuted for not bowing to Caesar or accepting Caesar as Lord. And, you know, just in revelation, in relation to today, a lot of times we'll find ourselves or um, we'll find ourselves thinking that um, we want to go with the flow of what everybody else is doing. But God has truly called us to separate ourselves from those things that are of the world, not to bow. Um, today, we have several, you know, several, many different beliefs. And so Jesus saying, I'm the only way. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So it's not through Buddha. It's not through um, Israelite. It's not through uh, New Age. It's not through anything else, but through Christ Jesus. I can't even think of all of the new uh, beliefs, you know, that they're trying to push today. But it's not through that. It's through Christ Jesus. And so even then they were um, persecuted, poor or slandered. Jesus knew what they were going through, but told them to never, that he would never leave you nor forsake you. And even if you feel persecution, even from your family, because you have chosen to live a life for Christ, Christ is saying he understands what you may be going through, but hold fast. Don't give in to what they're doing. Their synagogue of Satan, their devil, their evil, fear, None of these. He's saying fear none of them. Only fear him, the the one who is able to destroy the soul and the spirit and not just the body, the body and the soul, not just the body. Fear him, Christ Jesus, because man can only do certain things to you. But we still, even after man will try to condemn us, to um, make us, you know, live according to their ways, we still as believers have to answer to God. And this is what he was saying unto them. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. When you're faithful unto death, despite what people are doing, this is what the problem he had with the church of Smyrna. They were persecuted and wanted to give in. But he was telling us today that if we hold fast to what we believe and be faithful, despite what is going on around us, we will reign with him. Amen. So now we're going to go on to the, um, oh, because it's always so talking about, yes, I'm sorry. He that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying unto the church. Um, so, um, okay, so what the spirit is saying to the church. 
And so we are the church as an individual and we need to be mindful that we're receiving God's word. We're able to hear it. You know, if you don't have an ear, you need to pray that the Lord give you an ear to hear uh, what he's saying. Because some things are spiritually discerned. Um, <clears throat> sorry. And so uh, when it's talking about two, uh, he that overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death. And so it, this is part of encouraging us because Christ overcame Christ because of victory, because Christ's victory over death. It should encourage us. <laughs> Excuse me. Death is the only door that we pass through into the presence of God. And so, you know, thinking about, you know, when we think about death, you know, so many people are fearful and afraid of death today. And thinking about the Smyrna uh, church. Are you in a place where you are afraid of death? I mean, when you look at what's going on in this world today, they have pushed fear of death, fear of death, and the fear, um, I believe, you know, is not of God, it's strictly of the devil, because we that are in Christ, we know because Christ died and rose again, that we too will die and gain eternal life, we will gain that crown of life if we are faithful, we know uh, what his word says. And so we all are looking forward to having eternal life. Amen. Therefore, we do not fear death for death is the only door that passes up, that we pass through to the, into the presence of God. And so when we're living a life looking to be with our father, the creator, we're not afraid of dying here because we're all destined to die one day. And so whether it's a day before, a year before, we're destined to die. But live a life that you're ready when your card is called, when it's your turn, when the Lord will call you. Uh, Revelation 14 and 13 says, blessed are, the, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the spirit, they will rest from their labor and their deeds will follow them. And so don't be weary in well-doing for in due season, we will reap if we faint not. Amen. Jesus promised those who overcome will not be hurt at all by the second death. And so even though we may die in tribulation, we know, come on, we have to look forward to the crown of life that, um, that God promised his people. Okay. So um, we are moving on. Well, I'm sorry. So even the church of Smyrna, uh, he was encouraging them to hold fast to the truth and not to uh, fear the persecution. So now the uh, church of Pergamus, he said, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and has not denied, and has not denied my faith, even in the days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. And so uh, the, the doctrine of Balaam was definitely against Christ. Um, it was the same thing as um, um, the, the people that uh, allowed the teachings of, um, I'm sorry, the Nicolaitans. Um, they were also uh, followers of Balaam. And so uh, it, it was important for us as believers to know um, doctrine of Balaam. 
And so we know the doctrine of Balaam was not of Christ. Even as today, um, those things are not pleasing unto God. The eating of things sacrificed to idols, committing fornication. Part of the doctrine of uh, Balaam was committing fornication and holding the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, meaning that we did not have to come subject to our flesh, as we've already um, talked about it before. It is it is prevalent that we do not pick up the doctrines of devils. Um, and in our lifestyle, you know, the things that we do, um, we have to repent. These things will put you in a backslidden state if you uh, partake in them. And as a backslider, God calls us to repent and to turn. Um, it's clear that backsliders not repenting from the fact here is that they did not repent. They will be judged. And so um, part of the doctrine of devils of Balaam will teach you that there's no such thing. Like it's OK to do the things that you've done. Um, against God and against heaven. But again, this is a warning from God that we have to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. These things um, that they're teaching are doctrines of devils. Um, sorry, let's see. Yes, doctrines of devils. Okay. Okay. Um, and so uh, people that, so it also says, who taught Balak to cast the stumbling block before the children of Israel. And, and, you know, what is a stumbling block? Things that will cause people to stumble. So even when you have believers that will put stumbling blocks before you, um, so for instance, uh, when you think about somebody putting a stumbling block before somebody. So prior to me receiving Christ, I will, would say I was an alcoholic. I would drink liquor. And so even though I don't have a desire to drink anymore, a stumbling block or something that could possibly trigger me would be being around alcohol. And so you have people that profess to be believers that believe it's okay to consume alcohol any type of alcohol. But scripture tells us to do not drink strong drink or anything that will cause you to stumble. Um, that we need to be sober at all times because our adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. And so if we as believers are not mindful of um, stumbling blocks or things that we may do before other people, you know, um, you will hear people say um, where, well, the Lord um, has not convicted me of that or um, they feel that it's OK for them to do because they haven't had the conviction of it. But we as believers have to do things according to the word and we're not to cause uh, to put a stumbling block before people, whether it's uh, listening to music uh, things that we may bring in our atmosphere, things that we may do that's not pleasing to the Lord, but satisfying to the flesh. We have to be mindful, even down to um, idols and committing fornication and or adultery. He says, repent or else I will come quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He will tell you what thus said the Lord. He's already given you what the word is. So thou hast also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. God is saying he hated the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, the doctrine of Baal. And so if you don't know, I encourage you to do a little more in-depth study. What is the doctrine of the Nicolaitans of, and of Belial? Um, he says, he that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the hidden manna and give him a white stone, a new name. Come on. 
There's a song talking about there's a new name written down in glory. And I can attest that that new name, one of those new names is mine. I ask you, is your new, is, do you have a new name uh, written in glory? Which no man knoweth saving he that receiveth. Come on. So no man knows. But scripture tells us that if we do according to his word, again, these letters, this uh, epistle is in red. So this is Christ talking. Okay. If, if we do what the word says do, then we have no problem or issue uh, with receiving a new name with God receiving us where well, he won't come quickly with us or he won't turn away from us or we won't gain our crown of life. So now we're going to Thyatira. These things said the son of God who hath his eyes like the flame of fire. I know thy works and charity and service. And so he, I know you give. I know you like to work. I know you like to give. I know you have faith, patience and thy works. And the last to be more than the first you desire to be last. It's not about you. Notwithstanding, I have a few things. So, you know, we talked about um, the other churches. They just had uh, one or two things. He said, I have a few things against you. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to do my service, to commit fornications and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. He said he gave her space to repent of her, of her fornication and she repented not. And God is saying he will come for her and her children. Um, and so the church of Thyatira, Thyatira <clears throat> is saying <clears throat> because you have allowed the spirit of Jezebel. And so, again, it's talking about Jezebel and this prophetess woman. But she seduces. Um, uh, goodness. Sorry. I meant to have more uh, things on Jezebel. And so uh, she's very cunning, very manipulative in her ways. And so he's saying this church allowed the spirit of Jezebel. Meaning, um, she was, she was not, though she professed to be of God and a prophetess to speak the words of God, she was manipulative, cunning. Um, she, her teachings again, were part of the Baal teaching doctrine, um, and the Nicolaitans, uh, where, she taught it was okay to uh, commit fornication. She taught them that it was okay. So, you know, thank you, Lord. I've heard people, um, so scripture says, when, it, when we're talking about fornication, it's better to marry than to burn. But I've heard believers, people that profess to be believers say, well, instead of committing if you commit a sin of fornication, just repent. And it's better to just sin and repent than to marry and not burn. That's um, that right there is an anti-God um, message. Again, he was talking about her teaching about teaching people uh, to commit fornication, that it was okay. And so today we have to be mindful of this Jezebel spirit that was allowed in the church of Thyatira that may even be, well, no, that is still in the church today that we can't give ear to that will tell us it's okay. God said, be ye perfect for I am perfect. Be ye holy for he is holy. He's called us to be separate in this present world, Jezebel was part of Bilal worship. So, you know, she had that um, same teaching. And um, we know the things that she did 
and how she manipulated people to get the things that she wanted and how she um, was very seductive in her um, manipulation and how she went against about things. She's a teacher of apostate. Uh, but acting like she is a servant of God. And so we have to be mindful of, she, you know, in better words to say, a wolf in sheep clothing, appearing to be of God, but definitely has a plan to separate you and take you away from the things that are of the Lord. And so uh, he gave her space to repent and she repented not. But it also says he's going to cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her. So it went from fornication to even adultery. When you commit adultery with her, you will be cast <clears throat> into great tribulation, except you repent of your deeds. And so if you have been a professing believer committing fornication and adultery, I encourage you today to repent, humble yourself, and know that you've been taught in error if someone told you that you are okay in the state that you're in, God forbid. Scripture says all fornicators, not some, not just the fornicators, not in church. The fornicators, even in the church, will have their place in a lake of fire. These kind shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And so don't be fooled thinking because you once repented to God, but now are still operating in a a lustful state or in a um, abominable uh, state of fornication that you are okay. The devil is a liar and you have been deceived. God saying, repent. If you have found yourself in any of these churches, whether the church of Ephesus, come on, if you left your first love, I encourage you today to repent. If you were part of the church of Smyrna and were persecuted and wanted to give in and didn't hold fast and not holding fast, I encourage you repent to repent today and to begin to hold fast to the truth. If you were part of the church of Pergamos and you were um, allowing the teaching of Balaam and putting stumbling blocks before other believers, uh, one of those ones that felt it didn't take all that to be a believer or a follower of Christ, I encourage you to repent, to have a repenting heart and turn from that which you have been involved in. Again, the church of Thyatira. If you have allowed the spirit of Jezebel, if you too have been operating in the spirit of Jezebel, I encourage you to repent. God has given you an opportunity to hear the word today I encourage you to repent and to turn from your ways and allow the God, allow God to begin to bring restoration into your heart and to your mind that you too now can be a light unto his people, that his people may be drawn unto him. Amen. That we're able to attest to who God is, what he is, what he has already done for us, for he's a keeper to them that want to be kept. We can be pure. Amen. We can live holy. Amen. And we can be perfect with him and through him. Amen. I encourage you today again, if you haven't, repent. Do your first works over. Allow the Lord to minister to your heart. Walk in a spirit of humility that you're able to hear when the spirit is ministering to you, it says he that have an ear to hear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Are you the church? Can you hear what the spirit is speaking and saying to you? Amen. Hallelujah. We got to come against these doctrines of devils, even the doctrines of devils that's be trying to be taught today. We know this scripture was written hundreds of years ago. Amen. Thousands of years ago, how be it ever, that spirit is still prevalent today. God said he said he's the same yesterday, today and forevermore. And we know that the enemy is still here, even though he may be changing his face. We know that he is still prevalent in the land. 
We have to have the spirit of discernment to recognize him, to come against him, and to stand with the power and the might that Christ has given us. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I encourage you, church, if you have found yourself to be in a state of one of these churches, to repent, to return, and to do your first works over. Be encouraged on today. We love you. Tune in tomorrow as someone brings chapter three. Um, we love you and thank you for listening.